Let's make a model with the right size by using a bounding box and some images as a reference. So I go for a box and just make an approximate size of this bounding box. And then I go for box edit. So I type in box edit to be able to set the size more precisely. Select it and now I can put in the values. So let's say I'm aiming for 500 in X, 400 in Y or maybe 300 and in Z direction let's go for 400 and uh, we could also see that it's now moved and let's try to be centered here over the x-axis so I will relocate re the gamble and position it down here on under mid and you need to have the snapping capabilities turn on here so grid snapping and planner and u snap in Gumball and something like that and now we could take this middle point here and I will go for for a top view to be able to snap here more accurately and the front view and let's see I think we actually are yeah we were all right so we just move it back so in perspective we have now positioned quite good and before we put in the images I thinking maybe we should change the grid here so I go for file and properties and almost in the top here we have grid and let's go for 100 count and minor maybe five millimeter this could be changed later on and major 10 millimeter well, that looks pretty nice so something like that we go for a side view and in this case when i click front that will be the side view so why not rename the camera the side view camera here instead of having front we rename it to side view so I will call this side view so it will be more clear what it is so now down here we have side view and top view and let's move in the image the side image first so we we just drag and drop so I have a, a few images that I would like to use so I just drag this one in here and we say okay to picture we pick a starting point here we will we will scale and move this anyway but it's approximately all right and we see it's a little bit too big so we will scale this with a shift click so we are scaling proportionally so maybe something like that we move it down so it touches the bottom there uh, that's pretty good and we could turn off grid snapping now if you would like to have a smoother movement of, of the image here so yeah good enough and now I would like to have a look at this in perspective because I think we could move this behind the box here so inside here we will have our model uh, some people also like to have the images quite far away so that could also be something to test so if you move this very far away it's not it's not in the way why we're modeling but as soon as we go for a side view it will be uh, in place so perspective and then it's kind of a little bit farther away so it's not interrupting us in the work here yeah, another thing we could think about is changing the, the properties of, of this one. So instead of having it um, this powerful, we could change the material settings here. So I go for the material tab and change the transparency. And I will, I will change it a lot. 
So we could still see the silhouette here, but it will not be that irritating to have turned on. Uh, and maybe when we're talking about that, turning on and off, layers are pretty good to use. So let's go for the layer tab and make one layer for the bounding box and one for the images. Bounding box. And let's make another layer for images. And we could right click because the image is already selected and say, let's change the object la layer from default to th the brand new layer we did. So I choose change object layer. And we could actually turn it off. We could also secure it by locking it and we will not be able to move it by mistake and turn it off. And now if we zoom out, and by the way, if you can't find your object, if you middle click, you could choose this quick approach to find or zoom in and out. And it also sets the tumbling point in a, in a good spot. So like in the gravity center there. So layers are really nice. So let's do the same thing with the bounding box. We position it into the, or assign it to the layer called bounding box. So we change the object layer. And now we could also turn that on and off. So let's move in the other images as well. So maybe we could go for a top view now. And we had images in the background here. So I will just drag and drop the top image here. OK for picture and an approximate size here, something like that. And then I try to move it in here. And a little bit bigger, so I shift click the scale symbol here. And again, we just eyeball this in, we could zoom a little bit closer. Shift scale, yeah, good enough. And the properties again, so I would like to have it's barely visible. So for this one here, I would like to have. Uh, something like that maybe and now if we go for perspective we also have that image there we could do the same thing here we could move it down so it's far away here when when we are in perspective but as soon as we jump to the top view we still see it clearly what we could see though is the the guess i made for the width is completely wrong. And now I have decided that the length is the important here. So it's absolutely 500 millimeter, but the width here that I made a guess on is not quite right. So we could uh, pick the, the bounding box. And if we do that, we could scale this uh, and have it uh, fitting towards the, the image better. So what I would like to do here is to scale in this y direction. So back to the top view and just find the scale symbol here. And there it is. So I, I will not shift click now. I will just pick it with left mouse button and that is perfect there. So in perspective view now we have the right length and the right width there. And we could put in the last image here, and that will be from uh, uh, the front view, I guess. So if you look at the images here, we have the front view, and I go for what is said to be right, which is actually, in this case, uh, the front view. So why not rename this as well? So I go for viewport properties and change this to font and the images same procedure move it in except position it approximately here and I'm going for the height here and we could immediately change the material there so we get this the right kind of transparency there so something like that maybe and we move it in and now we know that the width 
is all right. The height, uh, I will not follow that, but I, I know the width, I adjusted that to the other image, so that is correct. So in this case, I will shift scale, so I'm proportionally scaling the image until it fits the width here. So by using the bounding box, I know that all the images should be correct relative to each other. So in this case, we can see the height here. The guess I made on the height of this is wrong. So the only measurement that is, is left from, from the beginning is the length of this bounding box. So let's pick the bounding box and scale it down a little bit. So I go for vertical scaling and something like that. And now we are done. We could also move this image away here. And if we have it in the back or in the front, it doesn't really matter. Actually, we can go for, for that side there. And now we are done. We have all the images. Everything is set up. So let's save the file.